Okay, in this short little video, I just want to quickly walk through the most basic way of making updates to your project and then uploading or submitting those changes back into GitHub so that you can get feedback from your instructor and have your assignments graded. Now, before I get into it, let me just say that there are a number of different ways to work with Git and GitHub to make updates to these projects. I am just going to go through the most basic, which involves simply using the web browser to just drag and drop files. But if you're a seasoned user and you understand how to work with forking projects and creating branches and making pull requests, all that is totally fine too. So feel free to interact with the repository in any way that makes sense. But if what I've just mentioned sounds like crazy talk to you, then don't worry. I'm going to show you a really easy way to work with these projects. So from the last video, we had gone through and accepted and created our first practice assignment. <clears throat> and in this example, we have a readme document. And most of the assignments will have a readme that just gives you a brief description or an expl explanation for what you should be doing in that project. So have a look at those readme documents. Um, but for now, in this particular one, it just says that we should update this file with a brief hello message and then update those changes back into the repository. And so the, while we could edit this file directly in GitHub, I do want to go through the process of downloading the project and then re-uploading it. So if you click on the drop down option here for clone or download, you'll find your URLs for cloning the, the repository, but there's also a download zip button. So if you click that, it will download a zip archive. And for those that don't know, a zip archive is really just a file that inside of the file is any number of folders and additional files. So once we've done that, we can go to our downloads folder and we can see here is the .zip file. And if you're on a Windows machine and you don't have a specific piece of software to work with zips, that's easy. We can just use the extract all function from the flat menu. Um, and if you're on a Mac, then simply double clicking the file will extract it. So I'm just gonna right click this file and choose extract all. And then we're going to get a, a dialog that pops up and says, where do you want the destination files to go? So by default, it's going to create a new folder with the same name as the zip in the existing location. Um, you can do that. It's going to create a folder with the same name inside this folder again, um, which is fine. But if you want to delete it and just extract the contents directly into your downloads folder, you could do that too. I'll just leave the default for now so you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to click extract. And you'll see that it creates exactly what it looked like there, a new folder with the same name, just without the .zip. And if you open this, again, you're going to find a folder with the same name inside. And so that's what I was alluding to when I said you could, you could delete the folder name from the extract URL. Um, but it doesn't matter. If you do it this way, just remember that the folder inside the folder is the one that, that matters, okay? And so if we open this one more time, We'll see, here's that readme file that we want to make these changes in. So here's the readme.md. We can see the contents. And if you don't know what MD means, um, that just stands for markdown. It's just a file extension for files um, that are written in a format that can be converted into HTML. And for the purposes of this example, don't worry too much about it. You could edit this file with Visual Studio, but it, it is just plain text. So it might be easier to just edit it in something like notepad if you have that available or text edit if you're on your Mac. So I'm just going to right click and choose open with. And if you don't see notepad show up as an option here, just choose other another app and you should get a, a fly up or dialogue that looks something like this. And if you click on more apps, you should get a list of all the different apps that are available. Um, but I'm going to go with notepad and then click OK. And then we can see what the contents of this file looks like. So like I mentioned, it's just plain text. And so to make our updates, I'm just going to go at the end of the file and enter, oops, a little hello message from uh, DMIT student. And I'll just say here, um, this is my update. And then I'm going to save that. And so now I've made changes to my project. <clears throat> so if this were a... A programming project, you created a new project, you made some updates to your program.cs file, you're ready to upload it or submit it for feedback. Um, all we need to do is go back into 
our GitHub repository page. And you'll see here close to where we downloaded the file, there's an option to upload files. And so if we, if we click on that, it's going to come to another page that has a nice little target for us to drag and drop files and folders that we would want to upload. Now, in this case, I just want to upload that one single file. So it's the readme.md. And in, in, at least in the case of the first few assignments for you, you may only want to update the program.cs file. It should be the only file you're making any updates in after you've created your project. Um, but you can always drag and drop the entire folder's contents. That's fine too. GitHub will know what's changed and what hasn't. So I'm just going to click on the readme.md file. I'm going to drag that into here and you'll see that it's listed. So readme.md is there for me to upload. And then below that, we get a, a form to include some commit changes, uh, commit messages. And so there's two boxes. One is the short message. So I'm just going to say here, you know, that I've updated oops, readme.md. And below, I'll give some additional details. If, if you've made quite extensive changes, you might want to write a little bit more than a one-liner, then you would do that in, in this text area field here. So here I'll just mention um, that I added a new line with a greeting message. Okay. And don't worry about these options to commit directly or create a new branch. We'll just commit directly onto the master for, for this course. That's fine. And so once that's in there, we've, we've uploaded the files, we've entered our commit message, we can click on commit changes. And it'll take a second to process the files. And then once that's done, it'll come back and we can see that it's been updated. So the readme file by default gets kind of picked out in a, in a GitHub repository to be shown to you. So here we can see is the update message that I've included in that file. And you can also see when this file was last updated. So it's, it was last updated basically now. We, we just made that update. There's the change. And also the commit message that we used to update that file shows here. And so now if we click on this file explicitly, again, it'll bring us to what that file looks like. And it's being rendered as HTML because it is an MD file named readme. If you wanted to see the raw text content, you could click on raw here. And that just opens the file in the browser as, as it is. So uh, that's not really useful, but I just wanted to show you that it is in fact the same file that we made updates to. <clears throat> and so that's all we need to do. Once you've done that, because I'm also a contributor on this repository, I'm going to get a notification of that. And then I can go ahead and provide feedback to you in the pull requests tab. So let me just go back to the repository here. If you, if you notice the pull request has a, there's one pull request in here, and this is just a feedback uh, pull request on, on a branch. And that's what GitHub does in these GitHub assignment repositories to allow for a collaboration between a student and the instructor. So if we open that up, you can see here, it gives a little welcome note that GitHub classroom created this as a place to do exactly what I just mentioned, collaborate with your instructor. Don't close or merge this. <laughs> if you know what those things mean, just leave this open. This is where we'll be able to, to share um, communication back and forth. And then there's a note here for teachers. Um, so that doesn't really apply to you, but if you want to read through it, it gives you an idea of what it might look like on my end to give you comments on different parts of your code um, and things like that. And then down below, oh, we can see all the commits that have happened. Um, and then if you wanted to leave a message for me, you could do that here. So if you wanted to comment and, sh and share, hey, you know, maybe you did something kind of strange in your code and you wanted to explain it further, you could leave that as a comment and then I'll see it and then I can comment back. Um, really briefly here, I just wanted to show you what this might look like. So uh, on my other screen, I've, I've signed in as my, my student or my instructor account. And so without making any direct updates, I'll just leave a comment in here that says something like, um, nice work, looks good, no updates um, required. Okay, and then I'm going to post that as a comment. And just like that, you can see as I posted it, that comment now shows up in here. So from the time that you had this set up, 
and we made some changes. Don't don't mind the delete readme. I, I had to make some updates before I recorded this video. But you can see all the commits that have happened. And as we have conversation along the way, you can see those comments appearing here. And so if you were to submit a comment, it would appear. And let's just say, for example, that instead of saying, you, you know, nice work, I asked you to make some more updates or changes. You could you could go back make more updates to this file and then upload it in the same way that I just shown you that will show up as another commit and then I'll get a notice of that and then I can co comment on that file too. Um, so then we can just go back and forth. You can submit updates and I can give feedback and then you can make corrections or updates um, until the deadline and then we're, we're kind of good to go. So that's uh, a little bit about the process for uploading your content and collaborating with the instructor. I hope it makes sense. I hope you'll find it easy. I think it's a good workflow um, and is not too confusing. So um, yeah, that's it. That's all there really is for setting up a GitHub account, accessing assignments, and now uploading and submitting content. Um, I think as part of one of the walkthroughs in our class sessions, we may be able to go through a, another example. Um, but for now, I would highly recommend you to go through this process on your own if you haven't um, to go do it with the practice assignment I will be sending out a link for that shortly if not already and I will get an opportunity to give you some feedback on the same updates in this same process so um, good luck I hope you get an opportunity to go through that assignment and if you have any questions please feel free to post them um, to either the, the team's chat or into Moodle